Yo, hey man, how's it going? Yeah, good, good. Uh, what's, what's, what's wrong with him? Water? He's playing Divinity Original Sin too. He's been playing for 23 years. Wait, didn't that game just come out in like 2017 or something? Yeah, look, you remember that guy that was in the newspaper a few years back and he was really close to finishing his time machine? Yeah, well, he finished and he's been using it to go back in time so he can play more Divinity Original Sin 2. He's been stuck in this time loop ever since. I need more time. 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 Divinity Original Sin 2 sucks. Uh, all your life away because it will consume every fiber of your being. I shit you not, I was planning on having this video done two weeks ago, but Divinity had other plans. You see, after dumping about 40 hours of blood, sweat, and tears, I felt like I was close to finishing the game. Went online to see how much longer I had and saw multiple sources that stated a playthrough could take up to 100 hours for the first time. What the f- Even trying to decide how to start the damn game is a mission far too advanced for your average player. Seriously, Larian. Explorer mode, classic mode, tactician mode, or, or story mode? Granted, I did spend an exorbitant amount of time creating my character, playing through the tutorial mission, only to realize that I wanted a different character. Maybe that happened once, maybe that happened four times. Who's counting? It's not my fault that they give you so many damn options. Make a pre-made tune with its own backstory or create your very own character from scratch. Yes, there's, there's tons of options. You can be a skeleton, a dwarf, a skeleton dwarf? Heck, you can even be a spellcasting battle mage lizard. <laughs> what are you, 12? Damn, she's sick. Anyways, each character can select a preset of abilities along with changing your appearance as you see fit. You will then be asked to tweak your appearance, select your talents, choose up to two tags, and then finally determine your instrument. Mom always said it's not a true RPG unless you get to pick your own instrument, so... Hello, cello. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Now we hit the introduction cutscene and... Anybody got time for that? It's taken me three hours to move on from the character select screen, so pardon me if I just want to jump into some action-packed gameplay. How, how the, how the fuck am I supposed to move around? Oh, okay. Yep. Mind you, I haven't really played many CRPGs. I'm more of an action RPG kind of guy, so adjusting the keyboard and mouse controls took some getting used to, but even with this little roadblock, walking around this tutorial ship, interacting with different objects, NPCs, items, and dialogue options felt extremely overwhelming in the best of ways. Not only can you open boxes, you can move them, just like in real life. Want to walk around and put out all the candles? Go for it just like in real life. Want to drink poison, talk to animals, and play dead? Absolutely be my guest. Just like in, basically what I'm getting at is there's just tons of things to do. Divinity Original Sin 2, I'm not gonna say that every time, so let's call it DOS. DOS 2 lets you play the game in hundreds of different ways. Characters will react differently to you depending on your character selected traits and tags, as well as dictating the dialogue options that you have with you throughout the game. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, we know you're not a fan of having a lot of dialogue in game, so that was certainly a deal breaker for you, huh? How about you shut your face, Ashton? Uh, this game is fully voice acted. Like all of it. The whole game. Every little conversation your heart could ever want. There's even a narrator that will narrate. Oh, that's what a narrator does. Each time your character is performing an action or when certain scenes need a bit more description to immerse you into the story. Just listen to this majestic voice. The lizard looks you up and down like a farmer would a fetching horse. All of a sudden, he grips you firmly by the chin with the intent of inspecting your teeth. As much as I was putting this game off for fear of having to force myself to get past the boring story elements, I actually couldn't put the game down once I started. Also, Ow. The Patreon member side, it hit me in the face. Just briefly, I want to mention the lore of the Divinity series. Since this game is the only one I played, I had to do a bit of research, but it seems most of the world building by Larian was in fact done in this game. Meaning that while there are tons of plot holes and things that may not make sense as a series, if you're playing this game first, then you won't be too left out of the loop. Also, I played the Definitive Edition, which fixed a ton of bugs and added in a lot more content, such as the tutorial stage, which explains a lot of the new mechanics for <laughs> all you noobs out there. Now, 
it's hard to exactly pinpoint what makes DOS 2 so great if you haven't played it, but I'll try for all you spoiled little youngsters. You see, back in the olden days, you could you could either play Legos, you could read books, or you could go outside. Ugh. But when Minecraft came out, we realized that being able to live in your Lego world without having to do all the cleanup was what made that game so special. Similarly, my mom bought me a choose your own adventure book when I was a kiddo, and I thought that was the coolest shit ever. You made your dialogue choices by skipping to a certain page, depending on what option you selected. DOS 2 gives me that same experience, but only amplified by far better visuals, sound effects, immersive environments, and uh, yeah, you get the picture. Combine that with the fact that you don't have to set up for a Dungeons and Dragons campaign every time you want to boot up the game and you've got a recipe for success. Now, even if we just stop there, DOS 2 would be a game worthy of consuming what little free time you have in your life at the moment. Uh, but this is where I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret. I don't usually like tactical RPG combat. I, I, I've tried my fair share and always get suggested them by friends, but I couldn't think of anything more time wasting than tactical combat in a video game. Okay. Uh, generic archer number three, advance to H7, and <laughs> checkmate. <clears throat> Wait, he just dies? Yeah, fuck this game. I know, I know, maybe, maybe a hot take, but I would rather be forced to watch the entire Harry Potter compendium from start to finish than to play tactical turn-based RPG battle systems and, uh, I hate Harry Potter. So, while I was enjoying the RPG elements of the game, I was not looking forward to the combat. Well, until the actual combat started. Basically in the same way that you can answer dialogue choices in different ways and the multitude of character selection choices, uh, combat is no different. You can run in head first and try to damage the enemy. Spoiler alert, that rarely ever works. Um, actually, if you min-max your party, you can first have your tank go in and provoke the enemy group while using two conjurers and summon multiple incarnates, and then you can just shut the fuck up. As I were saying, you can try to outrange your opponents and use the environment to your advantage. You can kite enemies over to neighboring guards to assist you with the fight. You can try to avoid fights altogether with either sneak or persuasion, and just countless other ways to attack each encounter. Where this combat really thrives is that the more you understand a particular fight, the more you'll be prepared for the next time, and that's kind of the whole charm of the battle system. The game will usually autosave right before a fight, so you can try to brute force your way for the first fight, and then come back for the next time with a far better plan and understanding of the situation you're in. Each fight is more like a puzzle and mini game where if you aren't particularly over leveled, you will need to use every advantage at your disposal just to scrape through with one character and a sliver of health. Sure, there are a thousand ways to cheese most fights, but on the first playthrough and without looking them up, some feel almost impossible. Personally, I would always forget how many different options I had at any given time, and when I would actually remember a skill or a spell that I had that I was neglecting, then I felt incredibly silly. For example, there was this one fight where I kept having to chase this insect demon woman, and if I didn't kill her in the first turn, then I would be surrounded by her summons. However, I finally remembered that I could reposition my characters before the fight and take advantage of the terrain which allowed me to aggro some of the mobs away from certain party members while I focus on taking her health down with the others. Or another scenario where this asshole skeleton boat captain thing kept teleporting my characters into this death fog that instantly kills your characters. So the next time I started the fight, I instead teleported him away to begin uh, so that that wasn't an option for him. Pretty much every fight in this game will give you an opportunity to use unique tactics to your advantage causing a rainstorm, then immediately casting freeze to make enemies slip on the ground, uh, teleporting treasure chests or other enemies on top of each other to cause damage or simply repositioning them, lighting explosive barrels on fire after covering the ground in oil, which causes a virtual hell on earth. Fully sick, bruv. Let's just say DOS 2 gives you a few options to make each fight your own. Basically, this game has it all. The storytelling, the music, the player freedom, sense of exploration, female lizards trying to seduce your player character, sometimes successfully. The character building between your main character and the rest of the party is done extremely well, and I actually found myself interested in all of their backstories. The side quests are extremely charming and unique. Uh, for example, there's a side quest where you give some tainted stew uh, to an individual who then proceeds to head directly for the outhouse, which I thought was pretty funny. There's another side quest where you're meant to be absorbing the life force from some caged prisoners, and I don't know why, but it just gave me a chuckle with the dialogue and the screaming that was happening. 
there, there's, there's plenty more quests like this, but I don't want to spoil for people that haven't played this game. While you can play this game solo with just your main character, you also have the ability to play with three other player characters, which you can control. Alternatively, you can play this game with friends and have more player controlled characters, which I believe would be the ideal way to play this game. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. I'm not going to sit here and pretend this game is perfect, though. Uh, sometimes it has its flaws, just as just as any game does. I mean, just have a look at this typo. The writing team forgot to put the word two in the dialogue box and it pretty much ruined my entire experience. <laughs> Case closed. Well, that was until I had to lay down scraps of food to lead a hungry rat to a love struck turtle so they could fall madly in love. <laughs> that quest gets me every time. Uh, I promised I wouldn't cry. Basically, for all of its tiny flaws here and there, the charm and sheer gameplay more than make up for them in, in my eyes. I would also be remiss here if I didn't mention the mods. One of God's greatest gifts to humankind in PC gaming is the modding community. They increase the lifespan of nearly any game and DOS 2 is no different. Adding in more character classes, more skills, items, enemy tactics, character models, race cars, fully automatic weapons, mechanical war suits. Hey, hey, hey. You're making shit up again. Some of those things were real. Either way, DOS 2 has become one of my favorite games of all time, and if you ever wanted to get into CRPGs, then this is definitely the one that I would recommend that you play first. I can see myself playing through this game multiple times with different challenges, characters, and friend groups, so we'll more than likely get your money's worth if you're a fan of RPGs at all. Overall, I'm gonna have to give this game a nine, and yeah, nine skeleton, a nine skeleton dwarf watermelons out of 10. If you would like to see my previous favorite CRPG, then you can watch this video right here. And if you have any suggestions for me and any other RPGs like this one, then please uh, leave them down in the comments below. Otherwise, take care of yourselves and love you guys. Peace.